Oh, hello! I didn't see you there. So, time for a quick, unofficial, quick, loose, hit film tutorial. I'm at home today because I'm feeling slightly ill, but that will not prevent me from giving you handy hit film knowledge. Okay, so I'm going to take a look at this shot here. This is a kind of abstract example of the technique I'm talking about. Uh, what you can see is lots of people dancing, uh, except it's obviously the same person dancing, and there's a fair few hundred of her there. Now, there's all sorts of ways you could do this shot, but the technique I'm going to show you here is using the particle simulator to do it. Um, this makes it very easy, very quick to create, and uh, you can customize it however you want and create a ridiculous number of clones without having to do too much manual work. Um, do you think I maybe overdid some of the lens effects here? I don't know. Uh, I like lens effects, they're cool. Um, so, we'll, uh, we'll go from the start and show how this works. Obviously, you can use this for all kinds of things. Maybe you want to create a huge army, or just actually some clones if you're doing a clone type movie. Um, any kind of big crowd scene, you could use this for kind of background crowds. Uh, obviously, the closer you get, the more you're going to pick up on unrealistic aspects of the effect, but if you just need a big crowd scene in a kind of big wide shot of a city square or something, then this works really well. Okay, so uh, let's go from the start. I'm using this clip here of a lady in a blue dress with a flappy veil thing. This was actually taken from... not that, that's Fraps, which is what I'm using to record the tutorial but I didn't want to show you that. What I wanted to show you was this, HollywoodCamerawork.us. These guys, a fair while back, made a whole load of green screen clips available for free, uh, primarily for educational purposes. So if you have a look on their website, you will find all kinds of stuff, from match-moving tests, uh, someone sitting in a, a chair that you can composite inside a 3D jet plane if you're so inclined, all sorts of stuff. Uh, and also these clips of this lady with her flappy veil. Uh, and this just happened to be convenient for what I was trying to show. Obviously if you've got your own green screen clip that's even better and if you actually wanted to do this for real in a shot for your movie then you're going to want to shoot it much more carefully depending on the camera move that you're going to do in the kind of virtual visual effects shot. So yeah let's go from the start and uh, we'll see how we do this. Um, so first up we need to create our person here, our texture. So you can see she's been shot on a green screen. I'm going to take her and make a new comp out of her. So let's call it uh, source texture. And we'll hit OK. And there we go. We have our lady standing in front of a fan with a flappy veil. And we're just going to key this out really quick. So in the effects panel I will find color difference key. No, I won't. I'll take the chroma key because it has more features and buttons and makes me look cleverer. Add that on here, open up the controls, select that green. Okay, nice. We'll go into the matte view so we can see a little bit more what's going on. Let's just adjust the gain until we get something that's pretty good. Where do we want the balance? Let's take the balance that way. Hue balance. Yeah, that's pretty good where it is. Open up matte and we just want to drop that down a little bit, take that down a little bit, not too much though because we want to keep this kind of semi-transparent area up here. We'll just use the clip rollback like that, which just brings back some more of that transparency. Now obviously we don't want the fan and all the stuff that's off the green screen, so we'll just select the square matte drawing option and we'll do a quick shape around her. This is going to be pretty rough, so uh, normally you'd want to do a bit more effort on this. So there we go, we now have our isolated lady with her flappy veil and we'll go and create another comp and in this comp we shall call it cloned dancers um, actually just to change some of the project setups because we'll go for a uh, 720p 30 frames per second cloned dancers okay and we shall take our source texture composite shot and bring it into here so it's now embedded in here and there you go and now we shall take the particle simulator and add that to the timeline as well 
So we now have some nice spewy white particles. And we'll open up the controls. And in our emitter particle system controls, in appearance, we're going to change the texture source to layer. We have a tutorial on the main HitFilm channel all about texture control in HitFilm 2, so check that out if you're not familiar with it. Uh, source layer, I'm going to take the source texture, and uh, if we shut off that layer so it's invisible, you can now see that our particle textures are indeed the lady with the flappy veil. Um, but obviously this isn't quite doing what we want, so let's set up the rest of the particle system so it's actually creating a kind of crowd rather than just a bunch of weird textures like it is currently. You can see that's just a bit strange. Okay, um, so first up we need to choose our emitter shape. Currently it's a point and particles are coming out in random directions so they're all coming out of this point which is why they all look kind of stuffed on top of each other. We're going to change this to a quad emitter. Let's open that up and take a look at it. You can see this little blue square here, that's our emitter. So we're going to reorient that by 90 degrees so we've got a nice flat emitter and then we're simply going to scale this up so it's nice and big. Let's just go back to our active camera move our camera up and maybe back a little bit Okay. this will depend on the particular shot you're trying to create as to what kind of settings you're going for but you can see uh, we now have this flat plane shape which is being used as our emitter uh, but the particles are still kind of coming out in really odd directions and floating around. So let's go into movement for the particle system and we'll just change the speed down to zero. This means that the particles are born and then just stay where they are. So there's still a lot of work to do but you can see immediately that it just looks a little bit more like there's a bunch of people standing on the floor. Um, okay, we're not getting any colour here so in the colour source let's change this to texture colour. There we go. and. What we'll also do is we don't want the people just appearing like this and then just you know, get more and more of them, which looks a bit weird. Uh, so what we're going to do is go into the general settings for the particle system, turn on keyframing for that, and you can see currently it is emitting particles. We'll go forward a couple of frames and then deactivate it. This means that you basically have a couple of frames in which particles can appear. Currently that's not very many particles, but we'll go to the particles per second property and just start beefing that up a little bit. Now, as you can see, this needs to go up quite a way. In fact, it's going to have to go really high unless I make a slight tweak. Oh, yes. Okay, I told you I was ill, so you have to forgive my slight senility here. The reason I couldn't see anything is because the particles only have a lifetime of one second. This is why this isn't an unofficial tutorial. If this was an official tutorial, I would edit that bit out. Also, we wouldn't have my phone ringing in the background. Honestly, you just can't get the staff these days. Um, so, let's take our lifetime and just stick that up to 30 seconds so we don't have to worry about that. And you can see now that we have a whole bunch of particles which have appeared and then we don't get any more after that initial burst. Um, so, yeah, there we go. Lots and lots of particles. I'm going to turn off the grid because that's causing some occlusion issues there. And there we go. Lots of people standing in a crowd. That's probably rather too many actually, so let's just drop this back down, maybe go for 2,000. And we will also increase the size of our emitter shape so that they spread out a little bit. We don't want them all standing on top of each other. Maybe something a little bit more like that. Okay, that looks pretty good. Um, you can kind of already see the, the fundamentals of this effect. So it's all about just creating a particle texture and then using that to create lots of copies. Of course at the moment this isn't animating at all, you can see she's just standing there with her arm in the air and we want to see that veil flapping about, right? So down here we will change single to animated and then we'll have to open up the frame and you also need to change the number of frames property so currently it's only using the first frame and we want to use all the frames that are in that source texture so let's just go in here and we'll find out how many frames there actually are. We'll right click the time code, display as frames Skip to the end, 276. Nice. So over here, go back into controls and da, 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 276, a fine number. Okay, so you can see now 
that we have flappy veils. I mean, what more can you ask for? Okay. And that really is the fundamental aspect of this effect. You can take this now and run with it. Um, if we go back to my original, <coughs> where I slightly overdid the lighting effects perhaps, let's just turn that off. Um, and uh, we'll actually turn off the glow on the floor as well. If you wanted more variety, you could create multiple particle systems within that emitter, with each of them offset slightly in terms of their start frame, so they're not all in exactly the same position. Um, or, of course, if you shoot multiple elements, like if you're doing a crowd scene, don't just shoot one green screen plate. Shoot multiple people, different actors, different costumes, that kind of thing, and then set them each up as a separate emitter, uh, or separate particle system even within that one emitter. And that way your crowd will actually look like a variety of different people rather than just one repeated person. Unless, of course, you're making a clone film, in which case that's fine. Okay, um, so there we go. I hope that was useful, and uh, yeah. We will be back on the main HitFilm channel pretty soon. Axel's got a great tutorial about putting raindrops onto a lens or a pane of glass. And then, as you probably saw posted around Facebook and Twitter, I've also got a cool fireball effect coming up, which is shaping up very nicely. Okay, thank you for listening and watching, and we'll catch you later.